Okay, hi everybody, it's Robin with Uniquely Robins. Um, today we are going to work on our little shadow boxes. Um, if you remember, I told you they had these um, shadow boxes here at um, Dollar Tree for a dollar a piece. And they're nice and deep little shadow boxes. They're very nice little boxes. The only bad part is it has this writing on it right here. But I showed you that if you took the backing off and you took a, um, if you have a flat razor, it's going to work much better. Um, I had to use my Zacto knife because for some reason I can't find a flat razor, which I know I have some around here. But, um, and then you just scratch those words right off and they'll come right off. Um, and somebody did tell me that if you used fingernail polish remover and just rubbed it on there, that that would work um, to take that off too, which that's um, a great idea because then you don't have to take a chance on scratching your uh, glass. So um, I have three of them here, so we're gonna end up doing three. I may only get one done today. We'll see how it goes. Um, and then this is the picture that was inside. Um, you know, you could turn it over and use the same picture, but I think my granddaughter might want that. So I'm gonna set it aside and we're gonna cover this backing plate. Um, and you can use um, your journaling paper. Um, if you have a real pretty one you wanna print out and use, just glue on there. Um, you can use cloth, you can use lace, whatever you wanna use as your background. Um, I just had some scraps of this um, sticky uh, velvety paper that I use quite a bit because I bought quite a bit of it so I try to use it up um, and that's what I'm going to use on mine give me a pair of scissors hopefully that'll do well on this and I'm just holding it on there and cutting around it There's one, and this just has a sticky back on it so it sticks really well. I use these for my shadow boxes and uh, things. I use it for a lot of stuff inside boxes and all kinds of things. I'm gonna try. I probably should have stuck it on there and then cut it because you know, I can't get anything straight. Huh? Not too bad. Not too shabby. Okay, so there is our backing. Um, and these have uh, the little the hang-up thing right on them, so you don't have to worry about even putting a hook on it. Okay, so we're going to do some botanicals and make a little trio of botanicals with these is what we're going to do. Um, you can paint these. It looks real um, glittery, but it's it's not the glittery that um, shakes off everywhere. Um, it must be like, uh, I'd say it's a paper that's glued on there. Yeah, it is. You can see right there. You could peel that off if you wanted to, if you don't like the the shiny, but I don't mind the silver. Um, or you could paint the outside. Now these, the glass does not come out. It's in a groove in there, so it doesn't come out. And let's take the box apart, which you can do that if you want. So when you're painting, you know, just keep that in mind that you may get paint on your um, glass, but you could always, you know, wipe it off with fingernail polish remover or scrape it off with your razor, either way, to clean it back up. Okay, so I have some, these are called Pink Gumfrina. Um, I love these flowers, they're so pretty. Uh, and, and they, um, they're just so delicate looking. But these dry really well and they stay this color. And you, all you have to do is just lay them on the table for them to dry out. Um, so I really like those. Um, and then these are some uh, Bobo Hydrangeas out of my flower bed out front. And they dry real nice. They, they, um, if you let them just air dry, they dry kind of, uh, they have a beige-ish browny tinge, tinge to them, which, um, I mean, I don't mind that. And I just planted some this year that are going to be, um, red or pink colored. So those we'll have next year. Now I'm going to pull some of these off of the bottom 
uh, because with this particular flower, I want to throw some of these in the bottom loose just so they look like they're kind of floating around. Um, and the best way is to figure out what side you want because I'm going to pull all the flowers off the back side so it'll lay a little flatter. I hate doing this. Poor little baby. But we want it to lay fairly flat on there. And I'm debating if I want it to go straight up and down or if I want to have it a little curved. Um, I also have some lavender, which dries really nice also. I might put a couple of those in there with it. I'm not sure yet. Um, and this is a Rose of Sharon. And I don't think, I actually brought this one into press, but um, I don't think it dries as well as those. I've never dried these, so I'm not sure. But I do have some stuff, I remember I told you coming, um, I thought I had already ordered it, but evidently I didn't, I ordered the wrong thing. Um, but some crystals that we're going to uh, bury these in that will dry them out are supposed to keep the exact same color as when you put them in. So we'll see how that works. A little tiny spider in there, or an ant. Must be an ant, brought some ants in. That's all right, they're gone now. One more. Make sure there's no more in there. Okay. Okay, so we're going to start with this little guy. And I am going to uh, see how I want to hold that down. I think I think I want to put it kind of sideways. And maybe put just a few of these around the front still back in here. I think that might look kind of cute. Let's try that. Now, if you have a Cricut or a, a Scan and Cut or something like that with the vinyl, you can print out if you want to put a different saying on your botanical, like the name of it or something, you could print that out on the bottom and that would look really pretty on there too. Or you could print it on your paper. If you're going to cover your back with paper, you could print it right on there somewhere. Or if you know you're going to put your flower this way, you could put it right along here or something, the name of it, or the year, or whatever you want to put on there, is up to you. And I think I'm going to use this Gorilla Glue to hold my little guy down. Once you get them in there, I don't think they're going to move around too much. Of course, I've never done this before, but... We're learning together, but I'm going to put just a little bit of this Gorilla Glue. Can't talk right. My mom used to say, can't speak, explain. I think I'm going to put it up this way. And then we'll just hold him, hold him down there for a few minutes. While I'm waiting on that to dry figure out first I want to cut this stem off because it's too long there we go and let's see do we want to put some of these little guys with it or do we want to make I think we want to make a bouquet of its own I think it looks nice sometimes when there's just like one type of flower in each one and it just gives you like a specimen box almost. Okay. We want to make him any poofier. There's a little hole right there. I thought I'd fill it in for him. Now some of these I'm going to um Snipping would be the easiest way. Snip off just some of the little petals. I want to put those down inside my shadow box. And maybe a small little bunch or two laying down in the bottom. And I'll press the rest of them. Present flowers is easy. I mean, the old school ways, you just put them in between a couple of pages of books and smash them down. 
with something heavy for a while and there you go. Okay. Now I'm going to put a dab of glue. I want a couple of these up here on the side. So it'd look really cute with a little trio or the fourth four of them or so on a wall. Trim this, put this little, little piece down here at the bottom. Ooh, that glue stinky. I think I put a piece on that side. No, I don't want a piece on that side. So, so maybe this little one. Yeah, that'll work. I'll put it on there. Okay. You had a lid somewhere. Keep my glue from drying out. There. And you could spray this with hairspray too. Um, did I stick that? Oh, I did. Okay. I was like, did I stick that in it? Because it's not holding very well. Evidently didn't. Put any glue on it. Um, you can use hot glue on this too. I don't think that's gonna hurt anything. I took a little too much off the bottom. So I'm just gonna put it back on. There. Okay, then we'll take our little box. Carefully, oops, might have to put a pin in him because I did not dry completely yet. Somewhere, I have a little pin, let me grab one. Oh, goodness. These have little butterflies on them, so that would be cute, actually. Let's take a uh, pink one here. Get a pink one. And what we'll do is just go through the stem. Of course, you don't have to put this on there if you let it dry some, but I didn't let it dry enough. And just looks like a little butterfly sticking out right there. So that's pretty cool. I kind of like it. All right. So we'll put this together. And then this slides down in a little groove to hold it all in place. There you have it. It's a little more mashed than I'd like but that's just because it's not very thick and that's a very big flower. Um, I would have put a smaller one in, but uh, my hydrangea is on the way out. So um, that was about the smallest one I could find, but I like it. I think it looks pretty cool in there like that. So let's go through and do one more. And uh, we'll do these uh, pink gum frinas. I always have a heck of a time getting the uh, Grace is outside the door. She's not happy that I'm not downstairs on the couch. She thinks everybody should be downstairs on the couch all the time. Okay. 
So I just took this little guy and scraped these words off. I didn't read it. It might have been something I could have used, but I have a few different sayings, so. Something about unicorns. light keeps going on and off because of the sun going behind the trees. Can see what I'm doing. And this really is, would be much easier if you had a, a straight razor or just a, like a razor blade. Something that's a little flatter, but this works. Just a little more time consuming than if I'd have had a flat razor. <sighs> and if anybody tries the, um, fingernail polish remover let me know if that really does work because I don't really use fingernail polish so I don't have any fingernail polish remover um, to try it but I've heard if you just wipe it with cotton ball with fingernail polish remover it, will, it wipes it right off but that does do so I think we got all of it if you hold it up to the light you can really tell if you missed any like there's a little piece right there all clean but shadow boxes are very expensive anymore so anytime I get a, a, a project that I can use a little shadow box with I'm definitely gonna buy those because I just got well when we went to Nashville a couple years ago or uh, South Dakota to Deadwood a couple years ago I um made a shadow box for our vacation and I think I'm pretty sure I only paid like 26 or 27 dollars for a 17 by 20 shadow box that was two inches deep and I wanted to get another one to go on the other side of the wall for this vacation to do up and you know I could not find one and the only ones that I did find were 11 by 13s and they were like 50 dollars so, you know, prices have gone skyrocketed on them. So, that's a good thing, too, when you go thrift store shopping or garage selling. Um, to look for picture frames that have, are deep like that, that you can use for shadow boxes. Because there are some of those out there, too. I was going to tell you too that I had said that if we saw any good antique stores, I would do a video for you. But we only actually seen one, and their prices were outrageous. Okay. Well, if I can get it on there straight, we'll be all right. Okay. I think I put it on the wrong direction. Good thing this sticky last pretty good. There we go. Oh. oh my goodness, I'm having a hard time with this today. There we go. I think, I think. I think. All right. There we got it. Goodness me. Okay. Move these guys out the way. I'll press those. Now, we can either make us a little bouquet of... I don't have very many of the lavender. It's pretty much done for two. But the lavender would look pretty. Um, but I think I want to do 
the pink gum Frida in this one. That one's a little weak stemmed. Try to find the ones that have the best stems. And we'll make us a little bouquet with this one. And these are kind of nice too because they, they will lay down kind of flat, which is good. It's a little different when you're trying to make a bouquet to lay flat than if you're just making the regular bouquet. This little guy in there. Hold on just a second. I'm going to let her in so she'll quit scratching at the door. Come on. Come on. I know you didn't really want to come in. You wanted me to come down. But I'm a little busy right now. If I can find that stem. One of them. I want to stand up further than I want it to stand up. It's you. There we go. Okay. And then we'll put this little guy right here. Yeah, that'll look cute on it. Now I want a piece of ribbon for this one. twisty tie or a, a piece of string tying these together would probably be a smart idea I can do that without them all coming apart let's see how Good I am about one-handed tying. Not too bad. I'm just doing this just to kind of hold it where I want it while I'm working with it. So it will make it much easier. I think that was actually some Stretchy, stretchy twine. And while you're waiting on these to dry, if you want to, you can uh, spray them with hairspray. It'll keep them from shedding like that. But I didn't. Let's see, do we want pink? Let's use white. Let me grab the white. I think that'll look better on that red background. A little wider than I would like for it to be, but you know, you can't have everything. Let's see if I can make a bow today. <laughs> Did Daddy check the mail? Open the door without you. It was just Dad Grace checking the mail. Okay. Want it to be a little smaller of a bow. There we go. Time. 
Hey, I did. Usually it takes me a minute to figure out which direction I'm cutting. Okay. And we will glue him right on there. I'm just going to stick it right up there, glue him on, then let's see, we need about there, we're going to cut our stems. Oh, that's gonna look cute in there, isn't it? Might have my, yeah, I do have them a little long. Let's see, trim them up a little bit. This is, ribbon doesn't like you pulling on it too tight, it gets all puckery. All right, that'd be cute. And I did save some little ones over here. We'll kind of let just float around in the bottom, I think. have one of these on the table. I've had them on the table for about a week now. I can't believe it's done really well on the color, keeping its color and everything. So that's a really good thing about these. Now you do want, if you have any leaves on them, you do want to take those off because those will not dry nice. They will get all crunchy. If you have some you know, silk leaves or something you might want to add to them. That would be all right. And I don't know if you can see really close on these. Let me get a bigger one, see. On these, um, they have almost like a little tiny orange piece coming up out of them. If they're just really cool. saw the garden answer lady grew some of these a couple of years ago out front of her house and they were just gorgeous now they i will tell you they don't have the best smell if you get them in mass if you plant a mass of them a whole bunch of them they don't have the greatest smell to them so you might not want to put them too close to your house if you have a issue with that Trying to put a couple little dots. If you had hot glue, that would work. Just to kind of have a couple of spots where it's holding to the board. This wants to turn around, so we'll hold him up till we get him on there. Well, I'm in the process of trying to figure out if I want to switch rooms with my grandkids for the craft room. And so we've got stuff all here and there and everywhere right at the moment. So I have trouble finding things. And I think I'm going to put one of these pins in there if for no other reason because the butterflies look really cute. Let's see. Green's not really my favorite color, but it might stand out really good on this. Just stick him in there. He looks like he has a little butterfly on there. I think that's cute. Okay. So with this one, these I'm just going to put in the bottom. Let's see. There's my top. Yeah. 
put some in that corner and some in this corner and I want to face them downward. Ooh, that glue is strong. Damn. I'm putting my flowers in the corner. I'm going to put one or two up here, too. I'm going to put two up there. Then we're going to put her back on. And close him up. Isn't that pretty? And then those ones will just wiggle around in there, which I like. Kind of like confetti in the bottom. Just didn't really matter that I tried to face them the other way, did it? But yeah, I think they're kind of cute. Gonna hang them on the wall. And it gives you a nice inexpensive little thing to hang on your walls. Uh, and I think they're beautiful. And like I said, if you take your Cricut or what have you and you, um, I might move that butterfly out a little bit because you can't see that one very well. Let's do that real quick. Let's take him and him a little more out to the front. Still holding him there. There, yeah, that looks better. That looks better. And you got you a nice, inexpensive, beautiful decor right out of your garden. You work hard on your garden all year long. Why not bring some in? to the house to enjoy all winter long. I have a glass, uh, I don't know what it's supposed to be, downstairs, that it hangs up, but it's open inside. And uh, I don't know if it's some kind of a bird feeder or not, but it's made out of really heavy glass, um, which I would be afraid to keep outside. But I put some in a couple years ago and they're still in there, the um, hydrangeas, so. They'll stay in there and they'll stay good for quite some time. And as I said, you can paint these according to your decor if you want or decorate them up however you want. Um, we could even use some of our little uh, things to embellish them. You know, you do you. But I just want the flowers to shine. So, And you could write a little saying on there or something. Uh, but I think a nice little trio of three of these. I'll oh, find me some more flowers to do another one. I might do another hydrangea and just do them this way to where um, hang them up like that to where there's a pair or like this you never know whatever you want to do but I just thought it was a very cute idea very expen inexpensive idea I paid a dollar a piece for the um, boxes I had left over for the backing and like I said you can just use paper tissue paper anything you want to use um, and I didn't even paint them so I didn't have any money in paint and it had a little push pins. So for a couple of bucks, you have a really, really cute project to hang on your wall. And I just love them. I just think they're adorable. If you like them, or if you like this video, let me know. Give me a thumbs up. And uh, if you want to see more videos like this, let me know. Leave me a comment below. If you make these, um, please, please let me see them. I'd, like, I'd love to see what you do with them. Because there's a lot of different ways you can do them. So everybody have a great day. What do you want, Grace? Come here, do you want to say hi? Tell everybody hi. Say hi, people. <laughs> you are such a whiner. She just can't stand it if mommy's not sitting right beside her 24 seven. Especially after we came back from vacation, our neighbors kept her while we were gone and being gone that long, she just was crazy, crazy to see mommy, weren't you? She's a good girl. But show the ladies below some love. Spread the love around. Have a good day, everybody. God bless. Bye-bye.